I just finished my 15 year as a professional basketball player. We love Japan. Like when I first came to the league, skill was one of the things that really stuck out like a sore thumb because the Japanese guys didn't really have, they didn't have the skill and talent that foreigners had. But now they've really gotten better skill wise. There are other leagues that are like huge. Go yeah, go with it. Whatever, you know what I'm saying? Whatever you feel in your heart, you know, do that. Do you remember, are there like pivotal moments in like from your childhood all the way to like college and stuff, like moments that you really just remember super clear in basketball? Like it could be a jump shot, it could be any like a oh, one yes. game, like anything. Yes, I have, yeah, I have a few moments. Um, I was playing in the league, they called it, at the time they called it Biddy Basketball. This is, yeah, yeah, this is before, <laughs> this is, <laughs> this is before you get to JV and varsity. Sure. So I got an opportunity to play on the team. And one of the coaches was a, a very recognized coach for one of the BD basketball teams in the league. So the first game I played in, yeah. he saw me. Cause he had, I, I guess he had heard about me, but he, okay. he never saw me before. He asked for my birth certificate because he didn't oh. think I was the age that I was because I was so tall. So I'm like, this is the first time, yeah, this is the first time this has ever happened to me. I'm like, bro, like look, you see, like, look at my features. So I really had to bring my birth certificate in to be able to play, yeah. This was actually early on in my high school career. Um, I started playing varsity in ninth grade. I was I was coming off the benches like the sixth man, but we played a team called LaSalle Explorers. And LaSalle had been like a powerhouse for like years. Like Niagara Falls could never beat LaSalle. Last game of the season, we're playing in the convention center. And this is like a huge game because it's gonna be the last game between LaSalle and Niagara Falls because they were gonna combine the schools that next season. All right, 3,000, 4,000 people in this gym. I always remember the game because I had such a good game being a freshman and also coming off the bench. Like I had a huge impact on that game and we ended up winning the game and beating LaSalle for the first time after not beating LaSalle in 15, 16 years. And yes, making history. And the crazy part about it is we end up playing LaSalle two weeks after that in the sectionals and beat them again. So we beat them twice within the span of two weeks after not beating them for 15, 16 years. It was like one of the best feelings ever. Like I always remember that moment. It was like a pivotal moment for me in high school. Like, And then you got recruited yeah. to college? And I got recruited. I, I was, man, I was getting letters and getting recruited. I was getting recruited by Providence, Syracuse, Marquette, Penn State, West Virginia. Like all these schools were like in the Big East at the time. At the end of the day, I ended up signing to Providence College. You know, cause I'm a high school kid. You know, you just really don't know the, you don't know the, the game really as far as like the recruiting process and things like that. All that was new to me. Sure. I committed to Providence early because I had a, I had a very good relationship with one of the assistant head coaches. And I remember the day it was like, it, it, it feels like it happened like yesterday. I was at a barbershop. I was going to get a haircut. I got a phone call, picked up the phone. It was him. His name was, uh, his name is Phil Seymour. Um, so he called me. He was like, okay. He's like, all right, this is the situation. I have a scholarship on the table for you right now. Yeah. If you give me a verbal that you want to commit, you know, to Providence, I will honor that verbal agreement. Mm. But if you tell me that you're unsure or whatever the situation is, like I'm not guaranteeing that this scholarship will be here tomorrow. Okay. So I was like, you know what? I was like, all right, all right. I'm, I'm verbally committing to you. Like crazy part about me doing that is I think the next day or two days later, yeah. I was going on an official visit to West Virginia. Like even though I verbally committed to Providence, I still could have went on that visit to West Virginia, but I never even went just because I felt like, oh, like would I get in trouble or, or is this me being, you know, not an honorable person if I go? So I'm like, man. But yeah, so I committed. You know, the NBA, like NFL, MLB, mm -hmm. like those are like the main sports yep. right, in America. The other leagues don't really get any spotlight. So mm -hmm. it's like, we don't even know. Yeah, like, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, Spain yeah. or like Japan, Korea, they mm -hmm. have leagues. Other, and, yeah. And you I'm make a too. good living yep. and you, know, you have good lives mm -hmm. and still compete like on a high level yep. and everything. So I feel like that even if the NBA is not, not sure. there, like, I mean, you can still have a great life playing sports. Mm -hmm. I don't know how you feel about that. No, I, um, no, that's, you, you hit it right on the head. That's absolutely right. Um, there are other leagues that are like huge, mm. you know, even though you don't know about them or you don't see them as much, like these player, these players are getting paid some very good money, even though they're not in the MLB, they're not in NFL, they're not in the NBA. In terms of like the game here though, like, I mean, how, 
I mean, what are some of like the big differences that you've noticed? When I first came to the league, skill was one of the things that really stuck out like a sore thumb because it was kind of, they really brought us in to showcase our skill and talent because the Japanese guys didn't really have, they didn't have the skill and talent that, you know, the foreigners had. But now they've really gotten better skill-wise. Yeah, I see some guys and I'm like, oh, okay. Like, yeah, he got it. Like, he, he's a Japanese guy, but he can play. Like, yeah, I see that. I see it all the time. Like, most Japanese guys are like more so playing like a, a team-oriented game, you know? For the most part, that's how guys are playing. You, you don't have too many Japanese guys that are like, have the skill set of really going one on one and making a play or making plays for others. You have some, but it's not it's not a bunch of guys. You have know? you ever had like a good one on one? Like just even for yeah. friendly stuff. Like I mean, like when you play one on one with a Japanese person, like did you feel like oh that was that was good? Like oh for sure. Yeah, definitely had good sessions with like Japanese guys, Japanese teammates being in those sessions playing one on one. Yeah, for sure. The game is so universal now, you know, because guys are adapting. No matter if you're Japanese, if you're French. If you're Italian, it doesn't matter. In the NBA, they call it plug and play, right? Because it's kind of like everyone has that same kind of like, for the most part, the same kind of concept of playing a game or sharing a game, sharing the ball, spacing the floor, pick and roll. Like everyone's doing the same thing no matter where you're playing. It's no type of like barriers, even language, because basketball is universal. You know, certain words they use, obviously that are in Japanese, but for the most part, basketball is basketball. They use basketball terminology and it's, you don't have that barrier, especially when you're in the court. It's not, it's not a, it's not a problem at all. But what are the most frustrating like bad calls that you? Ooh, experience? okay. Um, <laughs> I, ha I had a rep tell me, oh, you like, cause he had like a kind of, I, I had kind of like a relationship with him. Like he's, he's known me for years, and he even calls me JP. Like that's how no, that's how long he's been reffing and how long he's been reffing my games, and he knows me. I, I felt like I got fouled on a play, yeah. and I don't know, it was maybe like a dead ball, and I like went up to him, was like, missing something like. Hey, bro, that's a foul. Like, you got to call that. And he proceeded to tell me that, oh, no, JP, like, you're a big, strong guy. Like, basically, like, you can handle the contact. But I'm like, it doesn't matter how big and strong I am. The, these are the rules. The rules don't say if you're this strong or if you're this strong. The rules say if this is a foul in the rule book, it's a foul. It, it doesn't matter if it's a, a foreigner on a foreigner. Foul is a foul. Like, that's just, just universal in, in basketball. Like, some of the refs automatically will call a foul on like a smaller like Japanese guy if you're in a paint with them even if they don't foul you they just they like some of the refs they understand and they know that if you're down here in a paint with this big foreigner or if he's in, even if it's a bigger Japanese guy and it's a smaller Japanese guy most times they they will they will give you the benefit of the doubt of that call because they they know like obviously like this smaller guy can't guard this big guy in the paint so they'll give you the benefit of the doubt sometimes they just give you a call, you know, even if it's minimal contact, right, right. you know, so that's why I say I, I see it go both ways sometimes. Yeah, this is my fourth year playing for Okayama Try Hoop. We've had some successful seasons. We have some mediocre seasons, but for the most part, uh, I really enjoyed my time being here. Um, I enjoy my teammates, the teammates that I've, you know, developed friendships with, even some teammates that I've played on previous teams with for my second season. We had a very good season. I think we finished second in the B B3. Uh, we had a phenomenal team. Like we we had one goal was to finish number one. You know, probably this this year was probably one of the toughest years. That had a lot to do with like injuries for sure, because we started off the season like awesome. We were in first place. Where I think we were like nine and one start the season, and then the injury bug hit us. And then from there it was it was downhill. I even fractured a bone in my pinky, and that was the first time ever knock on wood having surgery in my my career ever. So I was out for like six weeks. So that. That really killed us as a team, like, you know, because I'm like one of the leaders here. So stipulations from the year before when we finished in second, yeah. it gave us a slot that said the next season, no matter where you guys place at the end of the year, whoever finishes second, you your team will play that team in a one game, winner take all, and that team moves up to the B2. Because the first place team automatically moves up to the B2. They don't have to play in like a playoff or anything. Sure. So we end up playing in that game in Tokyo um, at the end of May. <laughs> I thought our guys were ready. <laughs> we were not ready for that game. We didn't play that one game until May 28th. We had a full four weeks of just practice. So it was weird. I've never been, that was the first time I've ever been in that type of, you know, situation. It's super weird. Like everyone that knew about the situation and everyone that I spoke with, my teammates spoke with, it was like, everyone was just dumbfounded. Like, mm -hmm. So I heard that like a lot of the games 
are in Tsuyama. Yep. And not in Okayama City. Yep. And that doesn't make any sense to me. Not at all. So my, like, my wife talks about it all the time. Can you explain that a little bit? From what I know, the majority of our boosters and our sponsorships are in the Tsuyama area. I think that's part of the reason why we have so many games in Tsuyama. But like you said, it, it really doesn't make sense when we have a gym right here at Zip Arena, right next to the Okayama Station. From my experience and my experiences and what I've saw throughout the years playing in Zip Arena, every time we play in Zip Arena, the fans, they, they really come out and show us a lot of love and support. Do you have any thoughts for people coming to Japan, like, you know, good and the bad? You know, where, wherever you are, there are always good and bad things. Um, nothing's ever perfect, you know? Um, and I'm speaking for myself and for my wife because the majority of years I've been out here has been me and my wife together. Sure. Um, we love Japan. Like, people like are more, like, welcoming okay. now, I feel. Compared then, to, like, 10 years ago. Compared to 10 years ago. Because, I, like, the world is changing. A lot of things are changing. Like, me being a black man in Japan is totally different than, like, certain people's, you know, experiences. Like, or being, like, a pro basketball player in Japan. They might look at me like, oh, like, just a normal person that's coming from the United States. They might not get looked at that way. Like, I see it every single day. Like, no matter where I go, like... So I've, I've, I've learned to like accept it, you know, and just take it for what it is. In your case though, like, yeah. I mean, how did, did they contact an agent and then they contact you or like how yeah, did they? Yeah, so yeah, more so they, they contact the agent if they're interested in you as a player. Mm. Um, for the most part, that's how, that's how it really works. And they'll catch you in like any uh, Tri Hoop games this coming season? Yeah, hopefully. Um, I would love to be back here at Okayama Tri Hoop. Um, I love my teammates, the organization, yep. the fans. Um, yep, yep. My four years here, everyone has showed me like tremendous love. Um, yep. A lot of people here at Okayama, they probably really don't know about basketball, but if they come to the game and they feel that energy, like, oh man, like, it, I think it would really interest them and, you know, want to want them and have them come back, you know? But yeah, how much longer do you want to like work? Um, I always, uh, I always have this conversation with uh, some of my family and my friends. It's an honor and a privilege to be able to play as long as I've been able to play. This this season, this is finished. I just finished my 15th year um, as a professional basketball player. I know I still have some years left on my body, um, but to be able to play the game that I love and get paid for it, and like meet new people, see new things, new experiences, playing in different countries, I'm super grateful. Like I don't, I try not to put like a time limit on it. A year, like. Any type of limit on it, really. You know, just whatever, how my body feels. I think my body will tell me when when it wants to bow out or it, sure. and tell me that it's enough. Yeah, man, I'll be cheering you on. So yeah, thanks, thanks I appreciate you. I appreciate you. I appreciate you having this uh, interview with me. So, yeah. It's been super cool. <laughs> so check out Jeff and the Tri Hoops. Yeah. yeah. So I had to give this to my guy, Bobby. Yay. I, pre I appreciate him for, you know, <laughs> you know, having me on set. Yo, I'm actually, I'm pretty sure actually this would fit me. Nah, it'd be too long. But like, it's not like... It's a like, it's gonna be super that's long. Thing. Yeah, like, I won't look it's like a... It's gonna be like a dress. I won't look like a ghost <laughs> or anything, you know what I mean? Let's check this out, actually. Because I was, like, expecting it to be, like, Ooh, a... Colors is going going together and everything. Actually, color, yeah. color, color, color actually, coordinated. you know what? It's not... not it's, it's not, not that bad. bad. No, it's actually, not. Actually, so you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's actually... Yo. Woo. <laughs> All right, dude.